what can you say? I have known, <coughs> I have known Arvind for nearly 60 years. Uh, well, technically I'm his nephew, we really were friends. And you know, when you think of Arvind though, when you see him the first time, uh, you see him on a wheelchair for most people. But you know, I was thinking about how do I, <coughs> How do I see I, I don't think I ever saw that wheelchair. For me, he was just a friend, someone who had overcome any limitation that he had, someone who had uh, stepped, gone way beyond that. He, he was just another person having fun in life, trying to do what he wanted to do. I remember when we were young and in golf links, uh, I've even babysat him when I was, I think, eight or nine years old and he was probably four or five. You know, when I was, uh, when I decided uh, the girl I wanted to marry, he was the first person in the family who I introduced her to. In fact, he just bought his car and he very proudly drove us around in his car and uh, in fact I got him to promise me that he won't tell anyone in the family till I told them and I think he did get into trouble with his mother when she found out that he knew before she did. You know, I spent time with him after that. Uh, he asked me to come on his board at Emil and uh, we did have a number of uh, very interesting discussions. Uh, he wanted to uh, get the company to move in certain directions. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing how nearly every year he was able to restructure to try and get it to go in that direction. You know, I, I could go on and on. I mean, I think uh, those of you who know him, uh, you know, you can use any adjective. I think those of you who've known him uh, know that he bore his pain and I'm sure he was under a lot of pain uh, earlier and uh, more recently. I don't think he, at least I've never seen him or heard him complain once or show it on his expression. Uh, when he went to him, I mean whenever I talked to him, even the last few months, uh, it was either he wanted to work something out in his business that uh, he wanted an opinion or we were joking about uh, something or uh, someone. Uh, so it was always a pleasure to go and see him. Uh, you just felt helpless that you could not, or at least I felt helpless that I could not uh, help him or uh, get rid of whatever problems he had. But that was Arvind. I mean, he was there. He never made you feel that he was different. He never made you feel that you were different and that uh, anything, in fact, you know, I used to be amazed at the amount of travel he did, how he traveled all over the world. I've met his principals, I've met his employees, I've met his friends. I mean, I can't think of a single person who had something to say that uh, was negative in any, any kind of way. You know, I think the way I remember him and I would like to remember him is when we were leaving uh, his house that uh, early morning, the night of first, the morning of second, I was driving back home with my daughter-in-law, Ellie, and she said something to me that I think embodied uh, Arvind that I knew him. She said, he was a free spirit. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, that he was a free spirit, and now that he is out of the limitations of his body, he must be running all over the place, having a lot of fun. You know, excuse me. Ultimately, all of us—it's inevitable. All of us have to uh, go there, and I hope when I do. 
He's around and we can be friends with anybody else. <laughs> Thank you.